And over the last month, we've talked to over 100,000 consumers, and their feedback is very clear. What is it? The feedback is to reinforce what Bud Light has always meant to them, which is good times, goodwill, and easy enjoyment. And we have that all packed inside of our summer campaign that we launched last week. We're in the middle of the NFL. I know Nate's not here, but we're in the middle of our NFL yeah. uh, campaign that'll be out in a few weeks. It's right there. And I think the fact remains that millions and millions of consumers enjoy Bud Light each and every day. But and they're they do still it. mad though, Brendan, because the sales have dropped. How are you handling that? I mean, no. as CEO, I, I just, I, I, I want to know what this has been like for you when you've had so much vitriol on all sides, your sales are dropping, people, you know, you, we have people firing guns at Bud Light cans. I mean, it's just gotten really so, yeah. off the chain crazy. Yeah. So how have you, how are you grappling with that, handling that? All right, guys. So we got another Bud Light story here slash Anheuser-Busch story as it just so happens that the CEO of Anheuser-Busch went on CBS this morning to explain the Dylan Mulvaney controversy directly, okay? Now, this comes amidst reports that uh, Bud Light had fired their woke marketing executives that were responsible for the Dylan Mulvaney campaign. However, Bud Light has come out, or Anheuser-Busch has come out and said that uh, they haven't done that, that they're still on leave. Who knows actually what's going on with that, whether or not they intend for those employees to actually come back or not who knows but again the ceo is speaking out directly on the bud light boycotts and i want to respond to it because this guy is going to be asked point blank about the dylan mulvaney controversy and bud light and their sponsorship of pride uh in general and i want to respond to it because i think that this ceo does not really understand the fact that in 2023 <laughs> the political environment is so divided that you cannot continue to try to thread the needle once you get involved in politics and i don't think that these woke companies really understand that when you come out here and you push diversity equity and inclusion when you directly sponsor proud events and stuff like that what happens is that you are getting political okay you are getting political okay whether or not you believe you are not uh, it doesn't matter because what happens is that especially when you're pushing this stuff on children the whole point is to not only have kids be exposed to stuff but to also make kids left-wing activists right to have them be exposed to left-wing ideologies that is what these companies are embracing again when they embrace far left woke movements and initiatives again like pride or like you know diversity equity and inclusion again these companies may think that they're not being political but they are so i want to uh react to this because again this ceo is lost right and i think that at this point shareholders should probably demand that he be removed because i think this guy has no clue what the hell is going on and what he has gotten himself into with the uh brand decisions for but like so uh i want to talk about it but before i get in that i just want to let you guys know if you like my channel you support my channel you can check out my merch like for example my signature racist mug it is a daily reminder of the 2023 definition of racist according to the left which is anybody who disagrees with the democrat party has my logo on the back as well too or you can check out my based shirts at my website gformanbcp.com get 20 percent off using discount code team bcp so without further ado Let's get it. Two decades, Bud Light was America's top selling beer before being dethroned by Modelo back in May. Now, this came after a boycott of Bud Light and its parent company, Anheuser-Busch, by some consumers. The controversy, I know you've heard all about it, began after trans social media star, that's Dylan Mulvaney, posted a video on Instagram, this was in April, showing the company had sent her personalized Bud Light cans, it was all part of an online promotion. Anheuser-Busch then faced more backlash for its handling of the boycott. Still, the company says it remains the country's number one brewer, with brands like Budweiser and many craft breweries. Wow. I didn't know Shock Top was under... Uh, Ed hires a bush. I didn't know that. Shock Talk used to be my summer beer <laughs> back in the day. But I, 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 you got to do your research into this stuff, right? Because I am wholeheartedly, okay, I am boycotting Ed hires a bush, okay? I'm trying as best as I can. I don't even drink that much. But if I do drink, <laughs> right, on occasion, I'm definitely not trying to drink any Anheuser Bush. So I'm definitely going to screenshot this and I'm going <laughs> to make sure I don't drink any of this stuff. 
Um, but there are a few that I know off the top of my head that belong to them. I just didn't know that Shock Talk belonged to them. I'm actually shocked by that. I didn't know that, but let's keep going. Under its umbrella, under its umbrella. And Hauser Bush, U.S. CEO, that's Brendan Wentworth, we're happy to say, joins us at the table live and in color for an exclusive interview. Number one, we're glad to have you here. Yeah, many you. many you. people in your position, Mr. Wentworth, would be running for the hills at this point. Because since April, you all have faced a lot of incoming. How and why did it did it go so off the rails? Because that certainly wasn't your intention when you did one can to one person. Yeah, it's been a challenging uh, few weeks. And I think the, the conversation surrounding Bud Light has moved away from beer. Uh, and the conversation has become divisive. And Bud Light really doesn't belong there. Bud Light should be all about bringing people together. And there's an impact on the business. And I think that's publicly covered on Bud Light specifically. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so you know that they actually really hurting, right? If this guy is doing rounds on mainstream liberal media, then yeah, he's, they're hurting, right? They're hurting bad. Now, he really should be on Fox News. He should be on Newsmax, maybe OANN. Maybe that's where he should be uh, if he actually really is serious about recovering sales. But, yeah, I mean, this is this guy is lost. I think he's lost. Uh, what was your intention? Take us to the beginning. What was your intention? What were you all trying to do here? And you've done this before, these promotional campaigns. Yeah, it, it was, just to be clear, it was, uh, it was a gift, um, and, it won, and, it was, uh, and it was one cam. Uh, no, it was a marketing campaign, bro, because Dylan Mulvaney posted the video and said paid sponsorship with Bud Light, right? So it was more than a gift, okay? It was a full-blown campaign. You were using Dilly to sell your beer, right? That's what you were doing. But for us, you know, as we, as we look to kind of the future and we look to moving forward, we have to understand um, the impact that it's had. And like I said, you know, uh, that, that impact has, has taken place. But it's the impact on our employees, the impact on our consumers, and as well, the impact on our partners. And I think I want, one thing that I'd love to make extremely clear uh, is that impact is my responsibility. Uh, and as the CEO, everything we do here, I'm accountable for. Given the moment we're in, this moment in America with trans issues at the top of a Republican social uh, or conservative uh, political agenda, Knowing what you know now, if you could go back, would you send this can to this one person again? There's a, a big social conversation taking place right now, and big brands are right in the middle of it. And it's not just our industry or Bud Light. It's happening in retail. It's happening in fast food. And so for us, what we need to understand is, deeply understand and appreciate, is the consumer. And what they want, what, what they care about, and what they expect from, from big brands. So this is a part of why you're getting it from all sides, because I asked you, would you do it again? And people on the, on the trans rights side of things, uh, supporting that community, want you to say, yes, of course, we want it, that fortitude. Uh, and, and, and people on the right would criticize you for saying yes. So uh, where are you on the issue? I mean, was this a mistake? You know, we, uh, Bud Light has supported LGBTQ since 1998. So that's 25 years. And as we've said from the beginning, We'll continue to support the communities and organizations that we've supported for decades. Mm -hmm. But as we move forward, um, you know, we want to focus on what we do best, which is brewing great beer for everyone, uh, listening to our consumers, being humble and listening to them, uh, making sure that we do right by our employees, take care uh, and support our partners, and ultimately make an impact in the communities that we serve. Yeah. So again, this is why this guy is lost, right? So when asked directly, okay, would you send another can? a Bud Light <laughs> to this individual, right, that cannot be named, okay? Even CBS News doesn't want to name this uh, individual. Um, this guy whiffs. He completely whiffs. He says a whole bunch of stuff without actually answering the question. And this is why the boycott continues. Because this guy is trying to thread a needle that you can't thread, okay? You can't walk the fine line on this issue, Okay? You have to pick a side because you decided to get political. Now, if you would have stayed apolitical, right, if you would not have done this, which, again, they've been doing this for a long time. He's telling you, look, we've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> you guys just noticed, okay? Uh, but if you decided to stay out of this stuff, okay, then you wouldn't have to pick a side. You could just focus on selling beer. But when you start sponsoring some of the most controversial things in politics, 
okay? Because this is a political thing. You have to pick a side, right? And the fact that Anheuser-Busch refuses to pick a side while also at the same time still sponsoring pride parades, okay, that allegedly have kids at these parades in which you have naked men that happen to be walking around, it tells you everything you need to know about which side they're on, right, in the long term. In the short term, they're going to try to fool the American people, conservatives, people that are boycotting the beer by trying to pretend like, oh, we're an American beer, right? We're an American brand when they're actually not, right? They're not an American brand. They're a foreign brand, okay? Uh, but they know in the long term what they want to do is that they want to reach the younger generation. And they believe that the best way to market to the younger generation is through embracing woke ideologies, which is something that all these companies in America are doing because that is what they think. This is what the market and executives think. They say, well, if we get on board with this woke political stuff, right? And they know they're being political. If we get on board with it, then we'll get young people to, to buy stuff, right? And again, this backfired on Bud Light because Bud Light just happens to have a core uh, conservative consumer base, right? But again, instead of this guy... Just taking an L on this and saying, you know what, maybe just maybe we're not going to be able to reach young people, you know, marketing like this. Maybe we need to give up on this type of marketing. No, no, no. They want to have their cake and eat it, too. They want to basically hope that it blows over and say, well, we're trying not to be divisive. Well, too bad. So sad. You were divisive when you decided to put out that sponsorship. You entered the culture war. Congratulations. And this is why I tell companies stay out of it. Don't sponsor far left woke agendas, okay? Because once you start sponsoring that stuff, once you start embracing that stuff, what you're telling people is that, hey, we're far left. And it's, it is bad because, again, conservatives are seeing the writing on the wall. We're not dumb. We know what happens when kids get exposed to stuff in school or in general. They become woke, right? They become progressives. This is a political issue. This is why they want to push it so hard in school. This is why Democrats, even though they know it's morally wrong, they know what's happening. They don't give a damn, okay? They're throwing their morals and values aside, their ethics aside, because they know that, well, in the long term, this is going to lead to votes. The more these kids get exposed to LGBTQ, the more woke they become, right? The more likely they are to vote Democrat. They're going to vote for us, right? This is, this is what they think. So when companies get on board with this stuff too, in order to try to market the young people, they're essentially pushing a liberal agenda. They're pushing them to vote Democrat. That's what you're doing. And I don't appreciate that. I don't like that, right? Because you've now become involved in politics. This guy doesn't get it. Shareholders in this company should be demanding that this guy resign, right? He should resign. He should step down. He has no clue. At this point, you got to pick a side, like Yingling, right? You got to say, look, we're on board with the people that made our brand great in the first place notice how these people will never bow they will never ever ever come out here and virtue signal to conservatives directly the same way they will with the woke ideologues right because they'll come out here and they'll talk specifically about race sexuality gender but they'll never come out here and specifically say you know what conservatives conservative americans patriots have been our core audience since this brand started blah blah blah. they'll never say that right but they'll say well lgbtq people have been our core audience we've been marketing them since yada yada this is the problem right this is the problem this guy is in over his skis. He has no idea what's going on right now. So you did point out that Anheuser-Busch has in the past supported the queer community. In fact, you had these cans uh, in 2019 that were rainbow bottles that were sold in stores all that. across the yeah. country. Which here's the thing. Here's the thing about that. A lot of people are like, well, they've been doing this for a long time. Why so much of the controversy now? Well, the reason why there's so much controversy is because now what's happening is, is that so-called you know, LGBTQ rights, and I'm not saying that this is a majority of the movement. It's not. In fact, I think it's a minority of the movement. There's a minority in that movement that says, well, our rights has extended to, you know, kids being able to get, you know, sex change operations or to go hormones or for them to uh, talk about sex with um, their teachers in school. Basically, again, what they're trying to do is push a overt far left agenda on kids. Okay. And that is the problem. 
that's why I said, look, I don't have a problem with these companies sponsoring Pride. If they want to sponsor Pride, if they want to come out here and talk about how much they love, you know, this stuff, fine. But you need to draw the line and make a distinction and say, hey, look, we support the right of adults to, you know, <laughs> sleep with whoever they want to sleep with. But we don't like when you're pushing this stuff on children. We're not okay with that. I'll be totally fine with that. I'm totally okay with that. I don't really care all that much about that. But it's the fact now that this stuff has become so intertwined that you really can't distinguish, uh, again, the far left agenda that is being pushed on children from the sensible, reasonable people in the LGBTQ community that say, you know what? We're not on board with that. That's too much. Okay. But again, that's why this stuff has become so controversial now. Um, but the political arm of Anheuser-Busch has donated to an anti-LGBTQ plus politicians. Um, so where <laughs> they've donated to Republicans, none of whom are actually anti-LGBTQ, right? Republicans, even if they had a majority in the House, the Senate and the presidency, there's no doubt in my mind that they would not come after gay marriage. OK, they're not going to. They're not even going to go after that. In fact, the modern day Republican Party. You could argue, at least on some social issues, okay, are more liberal than Joe Biden was back in 2007. Okay, I'm just I'm just keeping it 100 with you. So again, this idea that there are anti-LGBTQ Republican politicians is nonsense, okay? Because again, there's not even one uh, Republican po or mainstream one that's come out here and said, "Well, we want to ban trans surgeries in general." Right. I mean, no, nobody has, has ever proposed that. I haven't heard it. I haven't seen it. So, again, I'm trying to figure out what is so anti LGBTQ about the Republican Party. I don't understand. Do you stand and where does the company stand on queer rights? You know, as from a, we support politicians that support our business. And when we say that, we talk about things like uh, things that, that work for the industry, allow us to grow the business, allow us to employ more people uh, and really help drive the economy. Yeah. So another non answer. But again, you know, the liberal media host to ask this question, where do you stand on queer rights, <laughs> right? Again, they're trying to frame this as a rights issue. It's not a rights issue, okay? There's not one right that the, again, more, you know, far left individuals are fighting for that they don't already have, okay? But again, this is how they frame stuff in the mainstream liberal media, and it's frustrating, bro. It really is. You talk, you said, uh, at one point I heard you say, we're listening, we hear you. What did you hear and how has it affected your employees? I'm, I'm curious about how they're feeling and how they're dealing sure. with all of this. Our employees, um, we have 65,000. If you look at the 18,000 Anheuser-Busch employees, and you look at the 47,000 Anheuser-Busch wholesaler employees and they're full of pride and they're full of commitment. Uh, and so it's really a privilege and it's humbling to have the opportunity to, to lead the organization. Um, when you say listening, you know, I've been out to many of the impacted markets. My team has been out to many of the impacted markets. And over the last month, we've talked to over 100,000 consumers and their feedback is very clear. What is it? The feedback is to reinforce what Bud Light has always meant to them, which is good times, goodwill, and easy enjoyment. And we have that all packed inside of our summer campaign that we launched last week. We're in the middle of the NFL. I know Nate's not here, but we're in the middle of our NFL yeah. uh, campaign that'll be out in a few weeks. It's right there. And I think the fact remains that millions and AKA what he's saying is that, well, we're going to pretend to be a staple American beer, right? In order to market people and just hope and pray that they don't see all the other stuff that we're doing, right? Let's just hope and pray that the Dylan Mulvaney thing was a one-off, okay? And that um, this won't happen again. Hopefully the boycott will blow over if we just pretend to be super American and just hope that nobody else notices what else we're doing. Again, this guy doesn't understand that the spotlight now is on Anheuser-Busch, but like whatever they do, whatever they sponsor, okay, that is controversial or political, it's going to be broadcast, right? It's going to be broadcast. People are going to see it. Again, this guy is in over his head. If I was a shareholder in Anheuser-Busch, which I'm not, right, I would stay far, far, far away from that stock. If I was, you know, a reasonable investor, I would stay far away from that stock. Uh, I would be demanding that this guy be removed, okay? Because he, he he doesn't get it. He doesn't understand. You cannot thread the needle anymore, right? You lost that. You lost that privilege when this marketing campaign. But again, this is what he's trying to do. He's trying to play people like they're dumb. We will see if it works. Um, <laughs> let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.